I just lay down on the ground. And I started to feel very weak and tired. I feel my eyes beginning to shut, and as my eyes begin to close, I hear a voice speak to me. It says, son, if you close your eyes, you shall never awake again. I said, what? Who said that? As I looked to my right, I expected to see a man standing next to me, but there was no one there. That's bizarre. But I knew I'd heard a voice speak to me. Close your eyes, you'll never awake again. I thought, that means you'll die. What are you doing trying to go to sleep here? You idiot. This is a coma. You can't afford to sleep. You need any serum, any toxins. See, I intellectually knew this as a lifeguard, but here I am confronted with the fact that this poison is just taking me out. And I'm unaware that I'm on the edge of potential coma and I believe certain death. So I stood up, fought off the, t the, the, the death that was coming on me as best I could and found my left leg was still strong enough to support my weight. leg as a crutch and put my weight onto the left hand side of my body and hobble down the road looking for help. If you close your eyes, you shall never awake again. How's the clients? Are they done yet? <laughs> hey, look at this guy. Oh, drunk surfer again. <laughs> <laughs> hey, help me. Oh, please, please take me to a hospital. You got money? Yeah. Yeah. I'll pay. <laughs> How much you got? Fifty. A hundred US. Anything. <laughs> uh, you guys drink too much. Crazy. As they walked away lighting up a cigarette and just ignoring me, I heard this voice speak to me again. It said, son, are you willing to beg for your life? Please. 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 How much you got on you? I will pay. How will you pay me, huh? Don't worry. I'll pay you, I promise. Where do you stay? I stay in a bungalow. Tamarind Bay. Okay. I'll drop you at the Tamarind Bay Hotel. No, wait. Hospital. You've got no money. I'm going to drop you there. No. Please. Get out. Later. Get out. Why are you doing this to me? Uh, I flew out the door. I couldn't believe what was happening. Please. 
As I lay there, I could hear the familiar voice of a Creole fisherman from the village, Danielle. Ian. Ian, what's happened? Jellyfish. Uh, jelly, jellyfish. Jellyfish. I'll take you to the hotel. Grabbed me in his arms, he carried me into the hotel. The Chinese owners had closed the bar, and here next to the swimming pool, they were sitting there playing mahjong and drinking their whiskey. I'll get an ambulance. Hey, white boy. What's the matter with you? You drunk? No. No, please. A hospital. Please. I need a hospital. A hospital. What's this? Stupid boy. Why do you put needles in your arm? What? I'm cold. Please, I'm cold. I need a blanket. I'm cold. These guys think I'm a drug addict and I'm nearly dead. Stupid boy. Stupid boy. So cold. Help. Yeah. That. Yes, a. Yeah. Yeah. Try to take some. No, 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 no. I think you wait for an ambulance, okay? He wants my car. I looked away. I knew if I looked at him, I'd lose it. I thought to myself, if I, if I survive this, you're history, Jack. I mean, I was furious. I'm looking away, contemplating what I'm going to do to him if I survive it. And I see Danielle appear from nowhere, runs up to my side, and to my amazement, an ambulance comes flying to the car park. Hurry, hurry, it's a jellyfish. Please, hurry, please. Jellyfish? Careful with it. It's all right, it's all right, Ian. It's all right. Don't worry, don't worry. You'll be all right. As we race towards the hospital, I start to see on the inside of the ambulance what appears to be a small boy with white hair. I see sections of some kid's life with snow white hair. I then realize as I'm looking at it that this is me. This is sections of my own personal life. I thought, am I that close? With my mind, I did a mental check, you know what I mean? Of my own vital signs. My mind told me I am very close to death. As I'm lying there, I think, well, I, I could be that close to death. I may not make it. Well, I'm lying there having no idea what to do next, and I see appear before me a clear vision of my mother. She looked straight up into my eyes. She said these words. She said, Ian, no matter what you've done in your life, son, no matter how far from God you may be, if you ever call out to God from your heart, God will hear you, and God will forgive you, son. I thought, well, if there is a God, which one? I'd seen thousands. I'd travelled through Kandy, Sri Lanka, been through Bora Batur. I'd been to so many different places. And I'm lying there, I thought, okay, God, if you're real, show yourself. I used to say, unless I see God, I won't believe. Well, I lay there, I'm going, show yourself, and I'll pray. No face appeared. My mother kept saying, pray from your heart. 